Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We're going to continue a long-standing topic of conversation, healing and miracles and the mind and bodies and stuff. <laughs> welcome. Wherever you find yourself on what we call the spiritual path, whether you're a student of A Course in Miracles or not, welcome. There is a message here for you from your inner teacher, which we refer to here as the Holy Spirit quite often, but whom you may call whatever you like. This inner teacher, and I emphasize inner, is not outside you. There is nothing outside you. This inner teacher is part of our mind, one mind, part of our mind that will point us to truth, that will show us the way. If only we let him. So therein appears to lie our big giant challenge, letting him. Yeah. Why would that appear to be a challenge? Well, I don't know. Why is it? It's because we think we have to do everything completely by ourselves and alone. Because we think we're separate. We think we're separate and we've made the grave and devastating, devastating mistake of thinking we're encased in this device, that this fallible thing that does not last is us, that a body is the Son of God. That's a mistake. Happily, it's just that, a mistake. Mistakes can be corrected. Welcome to A Course in Miracles. You're exactly where you're meant to be right now. Again, whether you're a course student or not. This course talks a lot about truth and illusion. Well, truth is true. Illusion is illusion. Truth and illusion do not interact at all. They don't recognize each other. They don't gather for a drink on Friday night and some hors d'oeuvres or tapas. They don't interact at all. They have nothing, and I mean nothing, to do with one another. Each, however, is a complete thought system unto itself. Not everyone is raised, I certainly was not raised, to think of spirituality as a thought system. But I invite you to think about that. It is a thought system. There are two thought systems, and each moment, each and every moment of every day, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, and well, and of course, mostly we're not, we're choosing one of these thought systems. We are, in fact, choosing truth or illusion. It is one or the other, and we cannot, cannot have both, even though we would love to rail against this message completely and try to have both. We cannot have both. They are mutually exclusive, incompatible, and do not interact with one another in any way. So, moment to moment, we are choosing truth or illusion. We are choosing light or dark. We are choosing God or the ego. We are choosing life or death. 
our choice, our election. We have this power of choice. You have this power of choice right now. We are fond of saying in the world, life comes at you fast. Well, and it, it certainly appears to. <laughs> Doesn't it? It appears to be coming at you. It is not coming at you. It is coming from you, from you. What we appear to see in the world outside, including 8 billion of these little devices, what we appear to see is the effect and mind is the cause. This is an idea that very few of us are raised with. I certainly was not raised to think that mind is the cause. The entire illusory world that we appear to inhabit is the effect, and I do mean appear to inhabit. I wasn't raised with that thought system at all. And I'm sure that most of you can relate to that. So what we're doing here with the study and practice of this course is changing our mind. I mean, changing our mind. Replacing the thought system of separation, the thought system of the ego, with the thought system of the Holy Spirit. Replacing illusion with truth in our mind. We're learning to think with our inner teacher. In other words, we're letting him think for us. If that sounds scary, I get it. We're taught to be rugged individualists, no matter what culture you're from. No matter where you're from in the world, we're taught to go forth and conquer in a manner of speaking, to do the world. And along comes this big, thick book, insisting, as its central teaching, that there is no world. What do we then do? Well, it's this relationship with the Holy Spirit, with our inner teacher that I'm referring to. Now, when something connects for you here, I promise you it's not this it's the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you. What you see here is simply a communication device. I'm fond of saying, and I often say on these videos, that this is a pixelated image on your screen. It is. It's an assemblage of electronic dots. How the camera and, and this screen, this computer system reconstitutes it into the image of a middle-aged man from Arizona, I don't have any idea, but that's what we appear to be looking at. The form is literally nothing, nothing special. It's the message of the Holy Spirit that matters. And that's why this video series exists, to share it with you. This is my own personal directive. What yours may be, well, it's up to you and the Holy Spirit, so ask. So no matter how much we may try to deny this, truth and illusion have no connection. They don't have any connection at all. And healing is done in the mind. This may, or it may not, result in physical, tangible, measurable changes to the human body. It may, and frequently does, but that is not the point. You are not a body. The point of this course is to change our mind. It's mind training. The idea 
of separation, of separation from God. When I refer to the idea of separation in this video, or all of these videos, or what sometimes gets referred to as the separation, that's what we're talking about here. This supposed, supposed, never happened separation from God. Thinking that we're separate from God, we also assume that we're separate from our brother, from every other living thing, in other words, because we see it as every other living thing. We see multiplicity and separation, and we appear to be inside this and we take this 80% water, extraordinarily fallible organism, and I do mean extraordinarily fallible organism, we take this to be us, who we are all the while knowing that's actually not true at all. We know this. Or we would not even be interested in spirituality. You wouldn't be here if you didn't deep down know that there's more to it than meeting the needs of this guy. Yeah? Meeting the needs of the physical organism, eating, drinking, going to sleep, going to the bathroom, and culling through your email inbox to delete as many messages as you can because you have 857 of them this morning <laughs> or something, right? There's more to it than that. The idea of separation, in fact, reduced the body where we think we can run off and hide and be separate from God. We think we can run off and hide inside this thing and be separate from our brother. You may have seen several of these videos, or perhaps it's the first time, whatever the case may be for you. You may be wondering why I constantly refer to what we would call me as a pixelated image on your screen, an illusion. The more we disidentify with the world, with the body, with all of our concepts about who we are, and the more we affirm our true identity as spirit, as the Christ, singular and all-inclusive, the Son of God, the thought of God, the more we identify with who we all deep down know that we really, truly are the better. It does not mean, by the way, neglect the needs of the physical body. I went to the gym yesterday, for example. I'm going back today, for example. If you like to work out, work out. If you like to eat healthy foods, eat healthy foods. We simply live our lives here in the world, and we just do what we do. Just in the, what we would say is normal, we just live our normal lives. But you don't have to believe in the reality of it at all. So... There are plenty of spiritual students throughout the ages, in fact, this is age long, who make the mistake of thinking, okay, well, I'm not a body, so I'm just going to let it go. Nah. Nor is it a good idea, in fact, it's a mistake, to deny yourself things. Because that makes everything real to you. You don't have an opponent, so we just live our lives. Do what you like to do. Live your life. 
what we call normally. But you don't have to believe in the concrete reality of this at all. Again, it's nothing. This course aims to help us change our mind. And it goes all the way. Not stopping short at making this real. It is not real. Not making the world real or some aspect of it that we want to cling to. There is no world. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that you're perfectly at home in God. Where you've always been. A lot of people make the mistake in spiritual practice of thinking, okay, well, the body's an illusion. I must be an illusion. No, you're the all. Capital A. With emphasis, capital. Yes, yes. You know this to be true. You do, or you would not be here. I, in I insist that there is a part of you, no matter how much you deny it, and, and you're welcome to deny it, there's a part of you deep down that has always known. You'll hear it again. You'll hear it from this pixelated image and others. Now there's no going back. But you knew that already. So, again, welcome. So the idea of separation produced the body in the first place because we think we can run off and hide. No, no there's no hiding. And because of our identification, because of the mind's identification with the body, it makes the body sick. So I invite you to use this for the purposes of healing the mind. Give it over to the Holy Spirit 100%. Your entire experience, everything you think, everything that you say, everything you do, give it over to your inner teacher for his purposes, which is in fact your purpose of healing the mind. The Holy Spirit is part of you, not some outside power. There is no outside power. There is nothing outside you at all. So in wrapping this conversation up, let's not deceive ourselves any longer. We don't have to. And all of the suffering that we've gone through and are currently going through is because of this identification with a separate sense of self. That's a thought in the mind. That's where healing belongs, in the mind. That's why this is a course in mind training. Now, quite naturally, not everyone that appears to exist here on Spinning Ball of Rock is going to follow this no problem. There are many doors in spirituality, and perhaps you're checking this out, wondering why YouTube recommended this pixelated image on your screen, which continues to insist that there is no world, because the Course insists that there is no world, therefore pixelated image insists that there is no world. This course does not aim for us to change the world. What world? It's about changing our mind. So I invite you to think really big. We talk about thinking big here in the world, especially in the business world. Yeah, think big, dream big. Yeah, go big. Well, quit limiting yourself. Quit limiting yourself much more than this much, much 
much more as in the all, capital A. And you've always known. So along the way, this may come across, well, in many ways, it may come across as a deep relief. That's entirely possible, that this somehow touches you to the core and clarifies something that you've always known, and you most certainly have always known. Always. It may reaffirm something that you've felt for a long, long time. It may serve as a profound relief and a joy and a confirmation for you. And it may rub you the wrong way. That, too, is possible. Remember, we appear to be having this conversation because it's necessary, because we've identified with an ego, with an individual sense of separate self, walled off inside this 80% water thing that we call a human body, which isn't actually a concrete wall anyway, because our skin is semi-permeable. So how, where do we even think that this could possibly house the Son of God? I invite you to be limitless because you are. So open your mind to limitlessness. Open your mind to the Holy Spirit. Open your mind to God. You have no limits, and there is nothing outside you. So with that, I thank you for joining me, and I invite questions. Spirituality should produce them. I mean, that's the point. It is. It's the point. It's profound. This is incredibly profound, in case you haven't noticed. It's deep, deep self-inquiry. And we're invited to go deep with ourselves, which we fear to do. I get it. When you experience that fear, this is where you have this relationship with your inner teacher. Forgive what appears to make you frightened. Get in touch with the Holy Spirit. If you're unsure what to do, ask. You'll always be answered. Now, oftentimes, it doesn't look like prayer is answered. Well, because we're, we're praying for $50 here, or that somebody says a certain thing, or so-and-so wins an election over here. We're, we're asking for things on the screen of life in the illusory world. How about this? Ask your inner teacher for guidance. Ask your inner teacher for assistance in allowing truth to be just as it is. Help me allow truth to be just as it is. Or some other form of verbiage, whatever occurs to you. Very powerful. So please feel welcome to ask questions if you have them. This comment thread is, in fact, a perfect place for that. And please go ahead and subscribe, too. I'd love to have you join us if you have not. That's the prompt, this arrow in the corner of your screen. So go ahead and click that, and you'll be invited to join us. There are a handful of videos, several, that appear each week. So I invite you to subscribe if you haven't yet, and to continue to tune in. You may be wondering what's in it for you. Awakening. Be seeing you.